Hi, my name is Matt Magnone. Today I'm going to be talking about the Roman Maid Mother. Now, like every swim bait in your tackle box, there's a, there's a time and a place for each individual bait. It's all tools in a toolbox. There's times when you want to throw a triple trout, a huddle stand, a slide swimmer, a mother. So being able to decipher what the best time to throw each bait is going to make you a better swim bait fisherman and a better big fish fisherman as a whole. So when it comes to the mother, a lot of guys are looking at this bait going, $400, there's no way in heck I'm going to buy it. To me, it's worth it 100%. It's a very, very good tool when you're approaching larger size fish. It, the drawing power on this bait is absolutely amazing. And in the six months that I've really, really been dedicated to this bait, fishing it almost every day, um, I've seen a lot of good fish, and I've seen a lot of good response from big fish, as opposed to the other baits on the market. It's been pretty amazing. I've caught a lot of really good sized fish on. Like I said, you've probably seen some of the videos. And the biggest thing with this bait, it's, it's not so far out of reach from the average swim bait guy. Yes, it is expensive. That's the one thing that, it, the downfall in this bait, but at the same time, it's worth every penny. The craftsmanship on the bait, the way it fishes, the drawing power, it makes it priceless to me. So basically, here's the thing. A lot of guys are looking at this bait going, There's, I don't have any gear to fish this thing. So I'm going to kind of break it down as to, for the average guy. What you really need to throw it, in my opinion. There's a lot of guys that have varying opinions, but to me, I'm going to show you kind of exactly what I do. So, this bait's a heavy bait. It's a bulky bait. It's over 10 ounces. It's a heavy, heavy bait. So with that being said, you've got to have a rod to be able to throw it. So what I do is I, I actually pick the Phoenix Blank that I really, really like. I've been fishing it for other baits, larger baits over 10 ounces, and for some reason, it just fell perfect into this. It's just butter. So I'm actually fishing a blank by Phoenix. It's called an 869XH. It's a Phoenix hybrid blank. It's a saltwater blank. It's uh, it's a Wahoo rod. So basically what it is, it's an 8'6", 25 to 60 pound rated rod. It's got a soft, little bit of a soft tip on it in the first probably, I don't know, first maybe 8 to 10 inches, but it has a ton of backbone. On the cast, it'll actually load up, allowing me to launch this bait a good ways without that much effort. It's a very, very strong blank, but if you don't have a Phoenix blank, you don't want to wrap your own blank, you want to buy a factory blank, I recommend something over 8 foot, 8 foot or larger. Now, if you're tournament situated, tournament oriented, stay around that 8 foot, but make sure you have something with some backbone and some tip. Uh, over a 25 to 50 pound rated rod, you need to have the power to launch this bait. A lot of guys don't really throw this bait far because the rods will buckle under the load of it. Um, when I throw this bait, I pretend it's like 20 bucks. Even though it costs me a lot of money, I pretend it's a $20 lure. I'm going to throw it in places other guys won't throw it. I'm going to throw it right up against bounce off of bluff walls. Yes, it's wood. you got to be careful. But I'm going to put it as close as I can to, to cover and structure. I'm going to throw it in trees. I'm going to throw it between cables. I'm going to throw it next to docks. I'm going to throw it in ugly places. But doing that, you're putting a big bulky bait with an, a lot of drawing power in a prime spot for a big bass. That's one way I've been catching some larger fish. I'm fishing in nasty cover. Now, when it comes to the line on this on this bait right here, a lot of guys are fluorocarbon lovers. To me, fluorocarbon doesn't have the amount of stretch um, I personally prefer with a bait of this size. On the initial cast, on the load of the rod, and when the bait touches down, if you're not careful, you can break your bait off. $400, I'm not going to take it a chance. I throw it on 30 pound mono. I'm throwing an Iser Triple X smoke. Very, very strong line. It's cheap line. I've actually bought a bulk spool of 30 pound. I keep in the boat at all times. If I'm fishing halfway through the day, I notice that my line's getting nicked up. Rather than chance it, I'm going to take all my line off and I'm going to re spool. I do that a lot on the water here. You don't want to take it a chance, not only because you're throwing a $400 bait, but because you are fishing for fish of a lifetime. If I do hook a lake record, a world record, or whatever, I don't want to be like, oh man, I got nicked up line, I got to baby this fish. I want, to, I want to control all my controllables. When it comes to reels, I've experimented with low gear ratio reels in the fives, all the way up to the 7.1 to 1 gear ratio reels. Don't really like the 5 to 1 because I have to work a little too hard to keep this bait moving and doing what I want it to. I picked up a 7 to 1. Better. I'm catching a lot of fish on the 7 to 1. But what I notice is if I'm fishing with the wind, wind at my back, going down the bank, I'm almost overworking the bait sometimes. I lose that kind of control over the bait. So I just bought a, a basically a 6 4 to 1 gear ratio reel. I'm fishing an Abu Garcia Revo Toro, the NACL 60. Very, very good reel. Holds a good amount of 30 pound test, which I like. That's big for me. I, I don't want to fish a reel that's too small where on the end of a long cast, I'm more than halfway down the spool. It's kind of pointless to me. Out here on the West Coast, we have a lot of stripers and that kind of stuff. Or 
guys in the northern regions and stuff maybe have the pike or muskie. If you're on the end of a long cast, you hook a good sized fish and he decides to run, why why worry about if you're going to run out of line and it's taking you to the knot? So having a good amount of 30 pound, in my opinion, is, is definitely key. The gear ratio wise, when you fish this bait, you have to own it. You have to control every aspect of this bait. No handle turns. You know, you need to know where with one handle turn, is it going to go left or right? Is it going to go up or down? If I pump the reel handle one time, is it going to come up and dive? You got to be have to be intimate with that. So having the right rod, reel, line, and been in control over the bait, you're going to know exactly what this bait's doing. It's a very very technical bait. Now, what, but when you have the whole sequence like this, rod, reel, line, everything, you can fish all day and feel comfortable. You don't want to sit there and kind of think, oh man, I don't have the right rod for this. This is too much work. If it's too much work for you, you're never going to throw this bait the right way. So, one big thing about the mother that I've noticed is uh, a lot of my bites will actually come close to the boat. I'm, I'm not even afraid to tell anybody. A lot of my bites come 5 to 10 feet off the boat. Being that this bait's so large, it's so big, it's so bulky, it has a nice glide path to it, fish are able to track it from greater distances. So when I get within, let's say I get within, I'll make a long cast just like that, that's actually not that long of a cast, but for the sake of the demonstration, I'll go ahead and swim my bait. For every handle crank, I know exactly where my bait's at. I can feel the pump of the rod, I can feel the, the pump in my, in my reel. So all I'm doing is just fishing just like this. Every so often, I'll impart a little bit of action with my reel handle. Pump, pump, left, right. And when I get with inside of my bait, let's say I have a big fish behind it, fish over 10 pounds or even a two pounder. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll kill the bait. Even if I'm standing right here and it's five to 10 feet from the boat, those fish are so locked in on this thing. It's so natural and real. On the fall, it'll sink. And every so often, it'll shimmy left or right. A lot of my, a lot of times, I'll be on the kill just like this. I'll watch the fish come up, open mouth, and just charge it. Unlike any other swimbait I've ever fished in my life, most of the time when you get within five to ten feet of the boat, a lot of times fish will actually ditch out, and turn off. It happens a lot with the HUD. It happens a lot with the triple trout. A lot of these other baits, they're all good baits, but at the same time, there's a, there's a weird thing with this mother. It's got some crazy powers or something. I don't even know. But a lot of, like I said, a lot of my bites will happen less than 5 to 10 feet from the boat. So really, really be cautious of your bait. Pay attention to your bait. Look beyond your bait. I'll have a fish from 5 to 15 feet out charge the bait. And if I kill it right here, I've watched these fish come straight to the bait, open their mouth, and eat it right at the net. Right at the, right at the trolling motor, I should say. So this bait's a very, very, very good bait. I strongly recommend it for you guys. It's not so out of reach from these, for, for the average fisherman. If you take the swim bait game seriously, you want to catch a fish of a lifetime, and you're, you're definitely dedicated to this art of throwing a swim bait, I strongly recommend you have it in your box. When it comes to hardware, the first thing guys will do out of the box generally is I'm going to swap my split rings, I'm going to change my hooks out. Why? You don't need to. If a fish, if a fish wants that bait, he's going to eat it. And especially with this, I ran a test. Like I, I've always been that way. I've always been like, okay, I'm going to swap my hooks out. I don't feel comfortable. So I ran a test with this bait. I ran stock hardware pretty much the duration. I haven't even changed my hooks. Since I bought this bait, I've just sharpened my hooks up. I'm running silver hooks, the chrome nickel hooks. I'm using the same same hardware. All I did different was add a split ring to the nose. I'm a big fan of that. Me personally, some guys will tie direct, some guys will tie a loop knot. But with this bait, chromed out hooks, this thing's been bit up. The fish do not care. Leave the baits alone. As far as custom paint goes, a lot of guys will custom paint these things, but to me, the, the actual colors that come straight from the factory are better, in my opinion. They have better better drawing power, in my opinion. I've seen a lot more fish catches beyond it, but there's a lot of cool guys that are doing some good, good work. And if that's your cup of tea, you want a crazy color, get it painted. But don't be afraid to fish these baits straight out of the package. Take the hooks, put them on there, put some 30-pound test on your reel, grab a decent-sized rod, and get to chucking. Now, I'm going to fish this bait pretty similar to how I'd fish any other bait. I'm going to go down bluff walls, I'm going to fish tree lines, I'm going to do all that kind of stuff. So the biggest thing you want to do as far as the actual areas you fish this bait is decipher the part of the water column the fish are hanging, figure out what they're feeding, and put it right in front of their face. Simple as that. Now, it's a big bait, you're not going to get a lot of bites, but if you dedicate your time, you throw it all day long, you really, really put the work in to figure this bait out, you're going to be so happy, you're going to reap the rewards of fish over 10 pounds.